Here you go. If you don't drink beer, even if you don't drink beer, you know by now that the craft brewing business here in Minnesota is big, big, big business. Yeah, it really is. From Surly to Summit, there are more than 120, 120 licensed breweries in the state. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, dozens more in the works. Many of these breweries and um, brewers started uh, as just simply people making beer in their basements or their closet or their attic, pretty much at home. <laughs> uh, there are a few things you should know, though, before you enter into that craft beer business. And more on this is with Scott Ebert from Baker Tilly who is also a member of the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Scott? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Now, you run the, what is it called here, the National Beverage Practice for the accounting <coughs> firm Baker Tilly. How does craft brewing in Minnesota just compare to other states then? You know, uh, Minnesota craft brewing ranks about 14th uh, overall wow. uh, in, the, in the United States, mm -hmm. and so it's getting up there. Uh, we're seeing a pretty big boom yet in Minnesota, uh, so it was a little late from a trend perspective. Some early... Uh, founders here, though, like Surly, who's been around a long time, mm -hmm. and Summit, et cetera, that have uh, pushed that forward. So uh, we mentioned 120. We're at 120 now, but it wasn't that long ago that it, you know we were 10, 20. I mean, all of a sudden, is it just the because boom. people have <clears throat> heard about it and they think I can do this? They hear their friends doing it. I mean, what do you think? It, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. It seems to be you know from home brewing. Well, I like that beer, and then they move on to the next, and maybe wheel a barrel down and, and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, when the boom was going, it was fairly easy to get your product out, but now there's so many competing sure. products, it gets harder and harder uh, to do that. And, you know, they say there's 120 right now in Minnesota. There's 80 that have filed for license already in addition. Wow. wow. So that just kind of tells you that the boom is continuing, and there's a lot of talk about whether it's saturated or not. Now, is this a Minnesota boom, or is this a countrywide boom? It's a countrywide boom. Yeah. yeah. Some parts of the country are a little more progressive, uh, you know, uh, longer uh, from a historical mm -hmm. perspective. have already gotten there. Uh, I don't know about gotten to saturated, mm -hmm. but are much, much deeper, like in the uh, Portland area, for instance. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, we find several hundred or out in Colorado. Um, but then you get to the south or to the east, and it's just kind of starting. Maybe so you, you've got come some of the samples here. You've got Surly, of course, a lot of people have heard of that. Lift Bridge, just to name a few, Fulton. Uh, do you, you talked a little bit about that saturation thing. I mean, where is that point where it becomes too much? Are we getting close to that? What do you think? I don't think we're going to get close to that for a long time on the smaller end of the brewery size. I think, you know, if you look at categories from a, you know, a microbrewery to a, a regional brewer to a national or macro brewer, moving from category to category is going to get tougher. Um, but I think you're going to see more emergence of the local tap room uh, and brewers come. That's fairly straightforward to do. All right, say you're someone that loves beer. Uh, you're interested in making your own beer as well. You kind of dabble in that so much. What should that person know about just starting from scratch? Maybe they want, you know what? I'm going to have Keith and Kelly's brew, and <laughs> you and I are going to business together. What should we know? Yeah, first of all, I think that the important thing is to know that it's a business. Yeah. Right. It really is. I mean, if you want to have fun with it and be a craft, be a craft. Don't try yeah. to put it into a business. Mm -hmm. Second is you've got to really have a good business plan and think about how your product is going to compete with others. Um, if you've walked into liquor stores um, or even the tap rooms and the bars, there aren't a lot of room anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you used to have what you'd call three facings on the side of a package, now a brewer might get one facing on a shelf, right, and go oh, deep yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. in, in, in the competing. So they're not making any more shelf space, so you've got to compete for that, and it gets a lot tougher. So at, at what point do you get to the point where you're making it home and your friends say, yeah, it's great, it's great. I mean, <laughs> at what point do you move into that next stage, do you think? Um, it, you know, I think you move into that stage when it's really proven and tested. Mm -hmm. uh, in today's world, I would tell folks to, uh, even though it's frowned upon, maybe contract for a little while, mm. take your recipe and have it done someplace else before you start investing in the capital to make sure that it plays uh, in, into, the, into the space. Yeah, because it's not cheap. No, it's not. <laughs> it's very capital intensive. Just checking. They're cold. After They're the cold. night I've had, I'm just checking. They're cold. You I figured you might need yeah, one. Yeah, you deserve one. <laughs> Scott Ebert, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.